Secretary of State to come in and try to, in a genteel way, lift up photo ID and talk about all that Alabama is doing when the people in that room are fighting photo ID. When the NAACP is fighting, I mean, organizations are fighting photo ID, that is just wrong. That was Reverend Dr. William Barber, uh, who led a group that walked out of a church service this weekend, marking the anniversary of the March on Selma, the Bloody Sunday March, as the state secretary of state of Alabama goes before them and praises the state's voter ID law. Folks, it's been 52 years since Bloody Sunday when civil rights activists were attacked while crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge uh, in the fight for the right to vote. On Sunday at a church service held to commemorate the anniversary at Brown Chapel, a historic meeting place for civil rights groups to plan demonstrations, Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill stood up and spoke. He said the state is encouraging all residents with a photo ID to register to vote. Well, those in opposition to the photo ID law walked out of the service while others called him out. Of course, one of the folks who led that, you just heard him, Reverend Dr. William Barber, who joins us via Skype right now. Reverend Barber, how you doing? I'm doing well, Roland. How you doing? So I'm trying to understand this. So Merrill, the guy who, who, who pushed this law through, uh, exactly what happened? And also, who invited him to speak? Well, that's the thing that I want to know, but I had just finished speaking on, on if we know history, we cannot stand for hypocrisy. And how it is hypocrisy for people who are against voting rights to come to Selma and to sit up and claim they love the martyrs, they honor what people do, but then they push these policies. Then Merle gets up, and you know, he has, he's the man that, that, that has pushed the law that has suppressed about a couple hundred thousand uh, some statistics say uh, voters in the state. He has a website that says uh, if folk are, if voting is a privilege and if folk are too lazy to do this, then they don't deserve to vote. He has a false voter fraud website. He begins to get up in the church behind the pulpit and suggest that voter fraud is fine. Now, Cheryl Eiffel, who's suing him, the NAACP legal assistant, is sitting on the front row. And as he goes on, I just was moved, um, you know, by, by, by truth to stand up and say, Mr. Secretary, you're just wrong. It's wrong to provoke. And when I stood up to say that, um, you know, um, I was asked, you know, to respect him. I said, but he's not respecting this house. And people started saying voter fraud is a lie. Voter, um, photo ID is voter suppression. And so we, we then walked out. Um, but this, this, we cannot allow this role. We cannot allow people to come into our sacred spaces and even church. You know, there's a scripture that says if a person gets up and gives a false prophecy, the prophets must stand up and challenge it on the spot. Um, uh, he actually had outside somebody giving people, uh, saying free photo ID. Now, this is the same man, by the way, uh, Roland, who closed the, the, shut down the DMV <laughs> in black communities in Alabama to prevent people from being able to get this so-called photo ID, which the courts, and I want to say this to your audience, we have, the courts have found photo ID unconstitutional in Texas and in North Carolina. And we cannot in this season claim that we love the martyrs, we love the people who suffered. Uh, uh, you know, the blood is crying and we can't be silent. And we have to challenge this kind of hypocrisy. One of the things that, that has always bothered me, I remember uh, two years ago at the 50th celebration when you had all of these Republican members of Congress who were there and they were taking pictures and they were talking about just how powerful this was and uh, talking about the foot soldiers and there to commemorate them. And uh, Senator Tim Scott uh, was what was leading them as well. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, yeah, but you're the very same people uh, who are supporting uh, these voter suppression laws, who will not call them out. You will do nothing when it comes to the Voting Rights Act. Uh, and so why in the heck should we respect individuals who are sitting in our presence who are literally in their capacity as lawmakers doing everything to block what those same foot soldiers fought for then and now? Well, it, it, right, we cannot normalize this hypocrisy. 
you come in and say you love what people did in the past. There's a scripture that says we love the tombs of the prophets, but we don't love the prophets. If Dr. King was alive and others were alive, they wouldn't be in that church. But they come and, and say we love the past, but in the present, you are refusing to uh, restore the voting rights. That yesterday, Roland, was 1,349 days since the Congress has refused to fix voting rights, Ryan, Boehner, and McConnell. So what we were talking about is time for us to take Selma to Washington, D.C., and march on and sit in these offices, Ryan and McConnell, until they put voter, uh, our Voting Rights Act on the docket. We cannot just play with this anymore. Well, they say, well, people come to learn history. A lot of people love history, but they sin in the present. <laughs> you know, they refuse to do right in the present. And we have to stand up and challenge this hypocrisy. And I said that yesterday. I said that it's wrong for people to come sit on these this hollow pews where, that were stained with the blood of monsters that ran back to that church and then come to Selma and claim you love civil rights. Go back to Washington, D.C. and support voter suppression and select a racist attorney general who is the antithesis, who is an adversary of voting rights rather than an advocate of voter rights. And, this and, is no season to normalize this kind of hypocrisy. And we also know that, uh, again, they closed those offices, and that was an impact uh, after the election in terms of the number of black folks who were able to access IDs. Exactly. The Secretary Merrill, do you know he has a website that lies about voter fraud? I mean, you talk about Donald Trump lying about voter fraud. This man has his alternative facts uh, website, and 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 I don't say I don't know who voted, who supported him, or brought him there. But we have to stop this. We have to stop allowing people to come to King celebrations and and others who are fighting against what Dr. King stood for. And we do this in the name of being polite. Someone said to me, one of the ministers, you know, what we be polite. You, you people, this is not the time to allow people to come and lie to our people and get them confused. And I tell you what, I bet you Secretary Merrill wouldn't have a service and allow us to come there and do it. You see, we, we can't allow them to do things they wouldn't even allow us to do. And that's why white and black and young and old stood up after uh, I challenged them and walked out. This wasn't a grandstand either, Rona. I, I didn't want to, I didn't plan to do this, but I had just preached that morning at another service, if the blood of the martyrs are crying, then we cannot be silent. And it would have been a form of hypocrisy to sit there and be silent while this man was actually lying and really suggesting in a way that the people had come across that Edmund Fetter Bridge and were beaten. So 52 years later, we would be supportive of suppressing uh, photo ID laws. That is just wrong. We had to say something. All right. Reverend Dr. William Barber, we appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, my friend. God bless. Take Thanks, Slide, folks. Joining me right now in studio, A. Scott Bolger, an attorney, former chair, D.C. Democratic Party, Long Victoria Burt, political analyst, writer, NBC Black, Eugene Craig III, CEO, Eugene Craig Organization, former executive, Maryland Republican Party. Folks, um, Again, this is, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with Reverend Barbara uh, on this one, uh, Eugene. I don't care if this guy's a Republican. I don't care if he was a Democrat. Uh, you're going to walk into Brown Chapel where folks have been fighting for voting rights and then touting your voter ID law? Oh, that's real bold. Um, that, that's, that's, that's real bold. I'm surprised. Nobody threw hands. I probably would have thrown hands with him if he did that in Maryland. Um, you know, voter ID, you know, it's, it's a moot point, um, you know, it's not needed. You know, there aren't any widespread cases of voter fraud, and when there are cases of voter fraud, um, it tends not to be uh, in favor of Democrats, what we're finding, uh, especially with uh, the recent case in tech, out of Texas. Um, the person literally voted for the person that just prosecuted them for voting illegally. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's disrespectful. Um, I think the Secretary of State needs to issue an apology very swiftly. Um, and um, I think it should be dealt with. And, and, and let's be let's be clear here. Let's be clear here. Uh, you, okay, now this is really funny, y'all. Shelly, go to my. This is really funny. <laughs> Shelly, go to my iPad. 
Y'all, th this is the Twitter account of Secretary of State John H. Merrill. Well, I sent a couple of tweets out yesterday, and the little wimp blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, boy. He, get blocked, <laughs> he, be, he, blocked me, he, he blocked me on Twitter because a couple of other people responded to him. Uh, and so, uh, little John Merrill, uh, his little sensitive feelings, uh, blocked me on Twitter. He's saying he needs a safe space? Uh, uh, he yeah, yeah he, right. He wants, he, want, he wants a safe space. Uh, uh, you know, Scott, go ahead. I'm, oh, sure, I'm sure oh. he's not the only Republican that's ever blocked you, Roland. I'm not <laughs> no, endorsing actually, it. No, no, actually, there's a lot of Republicans <laughs> who follow me. Yeah, really? uh, but again, that shows me when you, that shows me how weak you are when mm. it's not like, 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 like I block folks right. who cuss at me, use the N-word, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Dude, well, I disagree with your little voter ID law. <laughs> right. But here's the thing, Roland. What's, what's even more offensive to me is that our black church in Brown invited this individual, this Republican, who is the adversary, into our home, our religious home, to spew uh, voter ID and voter registration in the name of Martin Luther King and the fact that people died. I, what I don't understand about the black church institutionally is, while we are tolerant and the, the doors are open to all, we continue to allow ourselves to be used by white Republicans who come in and we forgive them, we tolerate them, and yet they go out and hurt our people and our congregants. Black churches have to stop doing that and giving them that forum. He should have been thrown out. I mean, that's yeah. what should have happened. He should have been thrown out. Should have been you, escorted out of the you, church. You can't, you can't imagine anybody pro-choice at a, at a pro-life rally. I mean, this could never happen the other way around. I can remember in 2015. But we do it repeatedly. Yeah, uh-huh. We do. Con what is wrong with us? Well, first of all, in Alabama, it was dangerous for us to do it. It could mean death at one point in this well, country. Yeah. I, I, you know, this, so there is a, there is a, 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 you know, a history of violence in that particular state, the state that is fourth in the world in incarceration. Mm -hmm. so there's some real, you know, meaning to to standing yeah. up to racism in Alabama. But I can remember in 2015, Congresswoman Terry Sewell wanted to do a protest of some of these Republicans who showed up at the 50th anniversary in Selma and was told by other Democrats not to do it, which I thought was a huge mistake. So yeah. we end up with Tim Scott, and I, I think Jeff Sessions was there. No, Rob, yes, Rob Sessions, Portman no, no, was there. No, 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 they're all there. They had no business being there. Well, they should not I, well, have been invited. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. And if you want to have people wait. at your rally to vote against voting rights, which is Tim Scott and Jeff Sessions, look, look. that makes no Tim sense. Tim Scott being the first African-American senator, Tim Scott being the first African-American senator is the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Why? So what? He, he votes Martin against King. King. He votes against Prince vote Stanford. Against yes, he does. He doesn't yes, vote he against does. King. He voted, he, he voted for Sessions, right? He doesn't vote he voted against for Sessions. He doesn't vote he voted against for Sessions. He doesn't vote So what does he stand for? He does what not What does he vote stand for? King. If he's the legacy of King, why is he supporting Jeff Sessions for attorney the general? The legacy of King in 2017, education is a civil rights issue so just of being, our day and age. Just being black and, and having and a pulse beat is being black and having a pulse beat is being black and having a Education is a civil rights issue of our day. So he's black and he has a pulse beat. Eugene, 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 a co-sponsor of Senator Brenner's bill mm -hmm. when it comes to restoring those rights taken away from the Supreme Court when it comes to the Voting Rights Act. He's not. So here's a piece. I get school choice, I love, and I'm a supporter of that, but Tim Scott is not where King was when it came to the Voting Rights Act, period. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.